Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we've got a tongue twister. The South Somerset ferreters are out for a ferret free bunny bashing night out. They're lamping. We've got the regulars, we've got hunting YouTube, we've got news stump. First, it's the World English Sporting Championships at EJ Churchill in Oxfordshire. What could possibly go wrong? Pressure to perform, pressure to compete and pressure to deliver over and over again. The last thing these shooters need are distractions, interruptions to lose focus. Which is why the guys behind the scenes of this glorious stage make the difference between an event being a shambles and a world-class competition. Yeah, we try to stay in the background, out of the way. Not, you act, but we try not to be seen and just let, let, let the shooters enjoy themselves. and enjoying using our product. We're going backstage at the World English Sporting Championships at EJ Churchill's and the West Wickham Estate. We're going to show the work that goes into ensuring the guns only need to worry about hitting that target. Jamie is Primatics Engineer on the ground. If all goes to plan, he'll be busy doing nothing, letting the traps do the talking. However, earlier in the week it was a different story. £200,000 worth of hardware needed installing and checking before this man gets his hands on them. Graham Brown is one of the most sought-after course designers in the world. If Jamie is installing the instruments, he's our conductor. The versatility of machines is what's a big plus for me. There's, there's a massive range of machines, so we can adapt to whatever conditions we want, whether it's you know, middies, minis, or, or standard targets. Also, they're chandelles, left-handed throwers. Lots and lots of choices of machines to use, which gives us a maximum amount of variety in target presentation. You looking forward to the final? Yeah, very much so. Always. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the villain sometimes. Back to the build and Jamie is working on the blue course. His colleague Monty is on the red. It all needs to be firing perfectly as this year's World English Sporting Championships has attracted nearly 1,300 competitors from all over the planet. The hosts are pretty pleased with how it's all gone. This is the World Championships. We wanted to put on a world event, a world class event. And, you know, we've had all sorts of sports stars come here from the rugby world, the football world, tennis sports stars, you know, have come to look and come to see what it's all about. It's now just what we do next time round. You know, we, we you know, <laughs> I was asked last night, would I do it again? And probably not the time to ask me, but actually it is the time. I'd love to do it again. And, you know, I've now, it, and the nice thing now is I've thought of lots of new ways how we can make it even better and just keep taking it on and taking it on. And that's, that's vital, really, I think, for us. Back on the course and Jamie's being proactive, not reactive. He thinks a battery has lost some power. Yeah, I've just been watching the rabbit trap and I can see the tra trap's starting to uh, cock slowly. So what I'm going to do is wait uh, until this squad's finished and then nip in and change the battery without even them knowing. The delivery will be, still be consistent, but it's just that you can see it when, when the arm's cocking, it's just a lot slower. When the squads change over, he's in and out like a flash. Target. Now he's spotted a broken clay in the stack. He's in again. Just noticed a chip out of the clay. So I'm going to get rid of the clay out of the machine. So that will limit it. That will now, that won't no bird now. So saving a shooter, shooting more cartridges than he should do. He's got a no bird record to maintain. No birds are his kryptonite. I was talking to the referee last night and he came up to me and he said for three days he's had one no bird out of both machines. So that's a good good rate. My boss will be very happy. While the final competitors complete their rounds, Mark Marshall and Graham Brown put the finishing touches to the super final layout. The 25 birder is taking place in front of the house and the grouse and the hare and deer for that matter. Back to the worlds and George looks like he's in a strong position. He's taking this competition by the scruff of the neck. I believe I'm still leading it and I think uh, Richard and Paul Simpson are tied on 187 but I hear Bill Maguire's going pretty well and some of the other Americans are going pretty well so 
um, we won't really know until the last shot's fired. He's chasing his 23rd world title and knows the importance of a shoot's infrastructure. They get everything set up, they get everything set up again in the morning, they check everything, they keep on top of it. And then during the day they're doing very little, they might get an old battery go down or perhaps a trap just move off its base and, and have to be reset. But apart from that they do very, very little because the product is so good and that's why you know, the CPSA use it for their shoots. That is why it is the it is the official trap supplier of FITASC, which is all the world and European championships, are Promatic traps because they know they can rely on it. Another top competitor still with work to do is Mark Windsor. He's enjoying the relaxed atmosphere. Churchill's done a great job as expected. Really enjoying myself. The weather's been really kind to us. Um, just about to start my second course today. Shot a 90 on red course yesterday, which was a couple light really, wasn't the best please, a few more on there for me. Um, but yeah, courses, courses are fantastic. Mark Marshall and Graham Brown have done a fantastic job. Couldn't agree more with, uh, with all, the, all the comments that they've had back. Jamie is also calm and collected. These scenes make him happy. The shoots flowing in a nice system, they just move from stand to stand and there's no queuing. No queues at stands, machines delivering like an atomic clock. The World English Sporting Championships 2014 was an event to remember for all the right reasons. And the winner? Guess who? For more about Promatic, visit promatic.co.uk. I've said it before, I'll say it again. From breaking clays to breaking news, it is David's on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. British Environment Minister Caroline Spellman has recorded an appeal to join the RSPB, which she claims protects Moorland. You can do that by joining an organisation Yet like research the by the RSPB That's shows right. that five times as many golden plover and lapwings and twice as many curlew live on keepered moorland compared to unkeepered moorland. And around three quarters of England's upland special protected areas are grouse moors. Despite its own research, the RSPB says it questions grouse shooting and wants more regulation for the sport. More loony politics. A conservation commissioner in New York State has banned wild boar hunting. Joe Martin says new regulations that prohibit hunting or trapping of free-ranging Eurasian boars in New York are there in order to help eradicate them. A 9,000-year-old stone structure which was used to capture caribou has been discovered 120 feet below the surface of one of America's Great Lakes. Researchers from the University of Michigan say the structure consists of a lane of two parallel lines of stones leading to a cul-de-sac. Within the lines are three circular hunting blinds where prehistoric hunters hid while taking aim at the caribou. The debate surrounding drones in America for use to monitor hunting or even search for prey is hotting up. One YouTube channel has decided to pour petrol onto the flames. Teo Fledermouse has released this film, which shows how difficult it is to shoot down a drone with a machine gun. And finally, British TV presenter Bear Grylls is getting ready to fight off the antis. His new BBC series, The Island, sees ordinary men put on a Pacific island and forced to fend for themselves. Episode two of the show next week will see them spearing fish and catching reptiles with snares, which many bunny huggers expect to find shocking. Grills has already been sued by animal rights organisation PETA over his films. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Now, from the new stump to what you lot have been up to, it is Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie, my name's Jack. I'm 16 from Kent. I'm celebrating the confirmation of our shotgun licence with a bit of rough shooting in the field. And it's working. <laughs> Hello Charlie, Neil Blackford here. Just doing a bit of ferreting. As you can see, we've got a few. See you later. Hello Charlie, it's Ellis here in Suffolk. Just had a cracking day decoying crows and rooks. Not a huge bag, but it's good fun, that's all that matters. Charlie, my name's Sam Magden. I'm out here in Indiana doing some early season bow fishing, and as you can see, the results are coming out awesome today. Just shot this 15 pound carp, loving it. Hello, Charlie, Steve, out in Telford, I'm shooting this evening. Uh, I've had a rabbit at 69 yards with the Alban Rapid 12. Next shot, very happy with that. 
Hello Charlie, Paul from Devon. Your three o'clock thumbnail on your advert, right next to David having the cucumber on his eyes, and just above Mac's head. Out on the roll in Devon, I managed to come across a little. Send us your own Hello Charlie, film yourself on your mobile phone just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Next up, rabbits with the South Somerset ferreters. Peter Hathaway Capstick's book Death in the Long Grass is a classic of big game hunting writing. However, when it comes to small game, long grass is a major problem. The wet winter Somerset had followed by a warm spring means the grass is growing strongly. For rabbit lampers there are only a few short weeks when they can get out and shoot before the rabbits are hidden by their own dinner. Because it's been so wet over these last few months, where everyone's seen the news of the floods, um, we haven't been able to get out rabbiting and lamping, and so we come out the night, the grounds get a little bit drier, still wet in places. It's just wet, Somerset is wet. <laughs> How long have you got before the stuff that's going to go for silage and haylage gets too long to shoot? Uh, next, well, we've probably got another couple of weeks before they do their first cut of silage. Well, you, you work on a farm, Luke, so you should know all this yeah, sort of Yeah, a couple of three weeks, yeah, that's right. Now it's a bit dark, but you may recognise Jaff. He is the doyen of the South Somerset Ferreters, the friendly group of families who don't go to the shopping mouths of Bristol or the beaches of Devon and Dorset on summer weekends. They go ferreting. Click on the links on the screen to watch our ferreting films with Jaff and his gang. Well, this is what he does with his evenings with his core team of wife Naomi and mate and vehicle owner Luke. We see rabbit after rabbit after rabbit and the chance of a fox. <laughs> so uh, what, are, what are we going to do now? Um, well the first farm we're going to go on, there's not a lot of rabbits but there's always a few foxes about. We'll say a few but we always seem to see if, you know one or two here and there. Um, she used to have chickens on this farm but they've long gone now and of course without the chickens you don't get so many foxes but um, we'll just see what's about. Probably a few rabbits so uh, you know, do what we can really. This is a clean up operation? Yeah basically, we'll try to. You know, every farmer wants a clean-up operation, don't they? <laughs> we have given Jaff a new fox cartridge to try this evening. It's the latest in varminting rounds from Winchester. He sets up a tin can at about 50 yards and sends three of them downrange. But he's not convinced he even hits the tin. Not much of a cartridge, we are thinking. But then we go to pick it up. Not bad grouping. Cam Cam reveals that the bullets went straight through the tin, hardly moving it. 58 grain. Winchesters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Or Heinz or the bullet? Both. <laughs> Heinz chicken soup. <laughs> Sponsored by Winchester. Yeah. Well, we've got a new can opener anyway. <laughs> <laughs> then we spot a fox in the distance. No time to get a camera on it, just a flash of eyes. Despite trying to squeak it back, it's gone. The only damage the new Varmint X does is to metal tonight. Once we exhaust the fox possibilities, Jaff swaps rifles back to his trusty 2-2. He is not a believer in spending money on rifles and scopes. The entire setup, including CZ rifle, costs under £300. Now, it just goes to show that if you can't get out to shoot rabbits, they breed like, well, rabbits. There are dozens of them in every field we try. The long grass makes it hard to find the shot rabbits too. The wet ground is not helping and the truck is working hard to get through some of the mud. Churned up gateways and fast growing plantage makes it tricky for Naomi to open the farm's gates. As the rain starts to fall, we call it a night. Rabbits don't like getting wet bellies. I mean, I wouldn't want to run around barefoot in mud. Do you not do that? Only at Glastonbury. <laughs> yeah. Naomi opens her last gate of the night. It only remains for Luke to wait for daylight and check the damage to the vehicle that a night's rabbiting can inflict. You're putting on a bill for some very new suspension bloody things, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but apart yeah. from that, just to wash it'll be back than you. Mm. Hopefully. Lovely job. You can wash it, man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> from bunnies to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube.
this is hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Here's my favourite film of the week to my Ami Mormons get together to hunt down Burmese pythons at large in Florida. This film shows a few tips on how to catch snakes, though little of them actually catching them. Field Sports Britain viewer SRS Power deals with someone complaining about his pigeon shooting. It doesn't do much to interrupt a lovely day shooting over stubble. 27 birds picked. It is the country show and game fair season. Our old mate Max Hunt goes to the Yacht Og Outdoor Messer in Odense, Denmark and tussles with an angry lady over a competition. Now let's go to Spain via a Frenchman. Monteria Espanol is driven game in a traditional Spanish Monteria. This video shows some long distance running shots and some big misses. Another Frenchman out of his home country, Charles Henri Doris's young son, has his first big game outing, which is none other than a black bear with a clean ish shot to the chest. Okay, they are American, but they are characterful. TX Bucks Snort and Deep Fried King go hunting at the Garcetas Creek Ranch in Texas. Hunting does and playing jokes on each other go hand in hand. So you want to be a waterfowler, you have to be an American who likes hard work. Fouled Reality Duck and Goose Hunting Channel gives us a great film on what goes into it. And finally, here is English Sporting Clay's take on the world English sporting at EJ Churchill. He is shooting, filming the blue layout. Nothing puts off the competitors. Even a red kite doesn't stop play. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you are missing the fishing films and the air gun films, watch our new show, Airheads and Fishing Britain. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. If you didn't enjoy any of those, perhaps you'll enjoy this. It's Fishing Britain. Thank you, Charlie. Today we're at Springwater Fisheries in Mid Wales. And I'm going to be trying something new. I've been taught a technique by this old hermit that lives in Snowdonia National Park. And do you know what? He has actually fed himself for the last 50 years from the trout he catches from the lakes. You're going to have to excuse me now because I'm going to have to concentrate. Look at that fly in the corner of the mouth. Make sure before you go fishing, talk to your flies. There you go. Just remember, talk to your flies before you go fishing. And if you want to know what else we've been up to at Springwater Lakes, join us Friday night, 7 o'clock, Fishing Britain, here on Field Sports Channel. Click on the link on the screen to go to Fishing Britain or to go to Airheads, which is out fortnightly and is a smorgasbord of goodies to do with air guns. Click on the link on the screen to see what we've done so far. It features Phil Price from Airgun World and Airgunner magazines. It's got Airgun writer James Marchington. It has the lovely Roy Lupton and a host of well-known airgunning faces. Well, we are back next week. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen or click on the link here for our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter 
or pop your email address into the constant contact box. We will constantly contact you about our programme that's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.